Hi, this is Frank Romano, Professor Emeritus at the Rochester Institute of Technology. I'd like to talk to you about digital printing. Now, when someone says digital printing, you must realize that it is a very large umbrella. It covers everything from toner, both uh, particle-based toner or dry toner, and liquid toner. It includes inkjet of various kinds, inkjet for documents and inkjet for wide format. So it's a very large space that we play in today. So I'm going to do four videos and each one will talk about uh, various aspects of digital printing. And the first we'll talk about high heat toner. High heat toner gets its name from the fact that toner based printing uh, is based upon the fact that you use electrostatic forces to bring the toner to the paper and then use heat to fuse the toner on the paper. Now the way it works is relatively simple. Let's take uh, an example and here I have an olive. And the olive is a particle of toner. Normally that particle of toner uh, is a pigment. It can be black or it could be a certain color. And it's coated with a little covering of plastic, if you will. Uh, sometimes it's all mixed together, different formulations for different companies. But what they are doing is essentially creating something that can be moved around by electrical forces. So we charge this particle uh, and we also charge the paper or have a charge behind the paper. And so what happens then is that the toner is attracted to the paper. Now that is done uh, through electrophotography in some cases where I have a light lens machine, those are your old copying devices, or I use lasers and the lasers then charge the photoconductive drum. Now what does photoconductive mean? It means that the, the coating on the drum is capable of being activated by light energy, photons, and therefore creating a charge which is based on electrons. So you convert light energy into electrical energy and you now have a charge on the drum that represents the image. The toner then is attracted to that image, one toner particle or multiple particle toners at a time, and creates the image in latent form on the organic photoconductor. Normally it's made out of selenium or some other material that can convert uh, light energy into electrical energy. At that point, the paper is oppositely charged, as I said. The toner is attracted to it. Uh, now it's, it's only lying on the surface, so now we have to fuse it. So now it goes through a roller or a radiant fuser uh, or a number of other techniques that are used in order to have enough heat, normally 400 degrees or more, uh, to uh, melt the toner so that it stays on the paper. At that point you have the image and that image can be black and white or that image can be color. Now the substrate must be capable of holding a charge. This is very important because in digital printing, by the way you've got the example of the olive, by the way don't eat the toner. Uh, the paper is part of the system. The paper has to either hold an electrical charge or conduct an electrical charge so there's a great amount of science and technology built in just making the substrate, whether it's paper or a synthetic material. Now, users like toner-based printing, particle-based printing, or dry toner-based printing because of its speed and its quality. It was the very beginning of digital printing. It began with black and white in 1976 or so, and then got into color in 1993, and it's all been uphill since then. The, if you look at the percentages, 15 to 20 percent of everything we print today is printed with digital printing and toner-based printing is a very large part of that. The large number of, of papers and substrates that are available, some of them are, look like normal papers and feel like normal papers, but many of them are synthetics. Um, and the synthetic papers, can, there's a wide variety of them, and they can give you the ability to have waterproof papers, uh, papers that don't tear. Uh, new markets are evolving as synthetic papers are now making their way into the digital printing world. Not every substrate that was made for offset is available in digital printing. Again, some of the substrates just could not make that transition. So today, you must be very careful when you buy a digital printing machine to find out what substrates are available. Norm normally, the manufacturer has a website where they list all of them. What can you look for in the future of toner-based printing? More speed and larger sheet sizes. Uh, we've already seen the machines that started at 40 pages a minute moving up now to 110 pages per minute or faster. We're starting to see page sizes that were 8.5 by 11 and 11, 17 move to 12 by 18, 13 by 19, and now there are some machines that can go 14 inches by 26 inches or more. So the sheet sizes are increasing, gives you the ability to produce more different kinds of materials and also to produce signatures. Uh, on, the small signature, on the small sheet size machines, you don't always have that ability. 
Most toner-based machines are sheet-fed. There are a few, a handful, that are roll-fed. There are some that are misleading. You see a roll of paper going in, you see sheets coming out. That's because the roll is cut as it goes in, so it really is a sheet-fed machine with a roll adapter on it. So that is an introduction to toner-based printing, and we'll see you at the next video when we talk about another aspect of digital printing. Take care.